In fact, the piece that I'm going to talk about and play tonight is, in a certain sense, a young man's piece, because it ends triumphantly. And you have to be young, at least in spirit and att attitude, to think that life can end triumphantly. <laughs> Alive. <laughs> so, uh, but the piece does convey a lot of what I think we all wrestle with as human beings and takes on, therefore, a kind of philosophical cast. And we often speak about certain music as being philosophical and probing and deep, profound. And I, in pre preparing for tonight, I started to think, what is it we really mean when we say a work is philosophical? I mean, philosophy deals with questions of the meaning of life, uh, what it means to live a moral life, uh, the possibility for making choices, free will, and so forth. Can music convey those issues? Well, in every one of the 32 sonatas that Beethoven wrote is a gem. Each one is completely or significantly unlike all of the others. But as wonderful as they are, it's really only the last ones, the last five or so, that give you that sense of a deep kind of philosophical confrontation with the big issues of life. I mean, if you take an early sonata like uh, this one, Yeah. 
downward side. To me, it's a sighing look. Oh, then go on. So before you go on, you have a little bit of a sigh. Shall I? Shall I go forward? Um, so after going forward, he introduces, as sort of the opposite of the descending third, is rising fourth. And then another descending movement. So together. You see already that descending third seems like already pulling back. But then decides to go up that fourth again. reaching for something. And so we come to another way that music shows conflict, conflicting emotions. And that is a sudden change of dynamic. Just at the end of that crescendo, instead of going to a forte, as a crescendo should, it goes to a sudden piano, what we call in music subito piano. Sudden piano. Contain most of the material of the rest of the piece. 